Hello YouTube, Mega1306 bringing you another video on Jade Cocoon. <coughs> nah, sorry for that massive throat clearing. <sighs> now to get into the Divine Barrier and do some stuff. Unfortunately the audio is not going to be changing so if you wanted to get better, well then... Tough luck, I can't do shit about it. There's legitimately nothing I can do. So... The audio will be as it is. So how it sounds for you is going to sound different for me and vice versa, so... The voice acting seems pretty solid, but some of the sounds will be sort of off, you'll notice. And even if you did, just ignore it. This is kind of what you expect when you're recording off of a phone. And you can't record the game volume, sorry, the game itself without using the microphone. So the microphone is picking up the voices the same way as it picks up my voice and it just messes with it. It doesn't sound the same. Like I listen to my videos after a while after I've made them and it's just I don't sound that like that at all in real life. I mean look it's the same thing as if I look at all the other YouTubers, I think they have the same sort of thing, you know. It's a little different. was worried, so he asked me to show you the way. Uh, I feel sorry for you, so I'll lead you there just this once. Don't forget how to get there, and try to keep up! Okay, this is the Divine Barrier. Use the Beetle Key to open the Beetle Gate. Duh. <clears throat> well, I skipped that part, but that part doesn't matter. So, now we've unlocked the Beetle Forest. Now it's going to be important to what Chorus has to say. Okay, so analog just doesn't seem to work for this. That's fine. Let's see, let's go and adjust that in more options. Input settings. We've got a digital. Alright, now I can use the stick. Some games only work in digital, so... I'll keep that in mind. So I suppose I'm going to use the stick instead. Of the D-pad the time. Who are you? I've seen poachers who impersonate cocoon masters. If you are a real cocoon master, show me by playing that flute. Slowly now. son of Riquettes, the cocoon master of Cyrus? If the son of Riquettes has been sent into the forest, the village must be in danger. Tell me what has happened in Cyrus. Fade to black. I see. So the Onibubu have reached Cyrus as well. And you came to search for the Calabas herb, huh? <laughs> but, uh, you're flute playing. You don't know anything yet, do you? No, boss. Just give him the job. Your father would never forgive me if I just let you go into the forest to die. No, we'll have a reunion soon. I am Chorus, the Blue Cocoon Master. On behalf of my comrade Riquettes, I shall initiate you to the arts of the Cocoon Masters. Nobody of us who for King the... Who, what's his name? who Rockettes is, it'll be obvious once you get the Rockettes garb. I mean, the Dream Man, I mean, he was wearing Rockettes garb. Once you see yourself wearing it, you sort of figure it out. So we want to do capture. A lot of people say this minion is overpowered. I mean, Let's yes. So that's what a lot of people have said. Because if you do not fuse this guy with anything, his stat spread is relatively good and unchanged. It's very well balanced, and it becomes a powerful minion on his own. But there are skills that you're going to want this thing to learn anyway, which will fuck with the stat distribution. So it's up to you on this one with um, what you do if you actually want to capture this one. Because you could leave it as is and leave it a water minion and then just sweep the game with it. 
I mean, I've got this thing to level 20, and my god, it stats for like 45 on just about everything. So it is really powerful if you leave it alone. So that's up to you on what you do with this one. So, you know, just sort of go in there. I'm going to go off screen, I'm going to go and purify this thing. I'm going to do some other quick mods. There's some things that I want to use. So, for example, we're going to be giving ourselves not max money because it actually has an impact on the game. The cocoons and all the skins. We want to have max cocoons so that way we can never run out of cocoons when we want to capture monsters. Because it gives us 99. You're only supposed to get about somewhere between 10 to 20. And 20 you don't get usually until the eternal corridor. So, this just means trips between capturing monsters and things like that grinding monsters become shorter. So, since I've played this game many times without, beat it, without cheating on the console itself, that's it, more or less. Your success with capturing depends on your skill with the flute. And the only way to improve is to imprison as many minions as you can. You won this time because I used a weak minion. In reality, you won't have it so easy. Train hard and work on your flute playing. In time, capturing minions will become easier for you. And you can only carry so many empty cocoons with you. Each time a capture fails, you lose one. It would be wise to return to the village if you run out. The minion you just captured is my gift to you. However, it is useless until it is purified. Oh, there's another glitch that you can use to get infinite mugwort through the attack and defense training, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to go back to the village, and then we're going to go freaking <clears throat> purify this mini. I think now will be an okay time to put in the cheat codes that I mentioned, which is... Huh. Shit. Guess we don't have those ones. Well then, I guess we're not doing them yet. I guess I'll have them prepped in the next episode. So I'll have all the skins and all the cocoons. So this time we'll be playing legit. So this is our first run through for the first forest. You'll be running through it like about two or three times. Anyway, so bear that in mind. So this is important. You have a divine beast to actually go with because otherwise you're going to need a shit ton of healing items and valerian powders. So, well maybe not valerian powers for a while. I'm not going to listen to whatever this has to say because I'm more into the gameplay. I've seen all these cutscenes before and they're not important to the main plot. And as you can figure out, wife equals it, is, it was already love interest beforehand and then became wife. So that was something that happened. So yeah, that's its base stats at level 1. It's pretty solid. So bear in mind, any monster you find in the freaking, you know, the Eternal Corridor You'll want to get it to level 1, and, well sorry, not get it to level 1, get it from level 1, and do some shit. Well, good luck! So, we'll come back to this at a later date, now back to the forest gates. <coughs> God damn it, why did that, why did I not even look? Well, whatever. Okay, so we gotta go down. We can't go up, up, shit, we can't proceed. No, yes, I wanna proceed. Ugh, bloody hell. Okay, now we actually get to capture monsters and things like that, so there's some specific ones that I recommend getting early on. So flipping this should flip the elements like I've just done, so this should be a wind. There we go, wind. We're gonna need a wind attribute anyway, so it's very important that we capture one. So we're gonna need wind, water, and fire. Are our attributes to beat the game. Like, literally, that's what you need. This time, we're not gonna bother since we're gonna capture this minion, so we're not gonna care about training our other one yet, because we're gonna use him to train on Patashas, because we we'll want the fire version of this as well. So, that's a thing. There is a thing called Heralico. Gotta be careful at this point, because if I'm not, Oh yeah, this reminds me. Remember how Pokemon have infinite PP on the opponent's side? Just, this is the same thing with the opponents with infinite mana. Which you can tell is going to be that much more annoying. 
If I were attacked with a dagger there, I wouldn't have 11 HP. It could have had a chance to one-shot it. I'm using a dagger, so it can basically do random damage. It's not very calculated. So sometimes it's good to swap into a minion pool now and sure that the weapon's going to kill it. And then just do a basic hit. The most important stat, I think, for your player in this game is your defensive stats. So your, you know, magical, de magical defense, basic defense, and your speed. Really, you're not going to be doing a lot of your damage with the main player. It's just going to be the weakening down to get to a specific capture. That's all he's going to be doing. So I'm going to give you the, over, at the end of this, when I get the stuff, I'll let you know the best setup for speed. So that way you can use items more and it'll get you more turns. This way you can also do some trolley shit, especially this will come in handy when you fight Kushidra, which is the final boss of this game. And Kushidra is one of those minions that can change its element. So if you get multiple moves, it becomes super useful. Now this is something we're going to weaken with the main player for a little bit. Then we're going to swap back in the other one and then kill him off. See, we did 11, and we did freaking 10 damage. Next we can do 9 damage. So sometimes we can do up to 9 to 11 with this thing. So here we go, 10 to 9. So that's our calculator range. And since we want to kill it with the minion, that's what we're switching into. Also, at the end of every battle, your minions will recover some HP. Your player doesn't. Which makes sense. These things can map for your store These minions. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go and just double attack it because it shouldn't have much to throw at us apart from one spell. And it just decided to use defensive attacks, so that's fine. And now we'll go from level 1 to level 2. So, we have a level 2 Rapatron for weakening fire minions. Because we either want a physical or a spell fire minion. It just depends on which ogre we're going to get, whether we get fire or wind. So, it, it, it really comes down to that. I mean, you could spend a lot more time here and then create a 4 attribute beast, but I don't like that. It seems like you seem to take more damage to everything rather than gaining a resist. Or it's like a some chance you'll have not more, da uh, more damage or less. It's just really weird. The only good thing that comes from doing that multi-merge stuff is... Ah, oh, sweet, fire. That means the things in there should probably either also be fire or not. So it all depends on it. But now we've got a water minion at level 2. We have a water special. Since he's pretty balanced, he's going to do a lot of damage to this thing. And being a level higher gives me somewhat of an edge. So now, since we want to capture this thing, we're going to go for a basic attack and hope this doesn't kill it. There we go. We used the main player, but I definitely killed it. Alright, now we've got a Patel tier. So this just means we've now got a Fire Minion, a Wind Minion, and a Water Minion first up. So we've got a Spell User. This is mainly a physical attacker, so that's what we're using him for. He's our base. We've also got to get a, oh, a Wind Slug as well, which does really shitty skills. We want the, weird, uh, the Fire one because it'll give us, um, I believe, a Fang Poison. And Ogre with Poison Fang is going to probably be important in the later ones, so keep that in mind. We don't want to replace- we have- we want to have Flesh to Stone on the Water Minion, Poison on this one, and then Sleep on the Wind one. Which will make sense later on, because it's really useful. If you hit them with Sleep, it'll basically do a critical hit when you wake them up on a super effective move. And what I mean by super effective move is basically... Yeah pretty much the elemental advantage. Okay, this is Shab Liquor. It's funny. It's, I wonder why they call it Shab Liquor. It's like the name of what you give to alcohol, but it's apparently made from pickled minions. So apparently in this game, we killed minions to turn them into alcohol. And this apparently explains why this feed, when we feed the minions this, it heals them. Alright, here's the water one. Just what we needed. Come on, get back here. You bastard. This thing is basically just going to spam recovery and defend. So there's really no point in switching into the water minion here for this. Really, unless Levant, the main player, takes a bit too much damage. But since we're going to get double hit, and he's going to go straight for a heal spell. Certain enemies are sort of like, you know, coded to defend. To make it look like they're out of mana, but really, all of them just have infinite mana and they just have AI. So, 
he may have enough to heal after this. No, he does not. Alright, since we got that double attack, this made this much quicker. So that's a water one, but we're gonna need another water minion to fuse with it. And since there's no other water minions, we're gonna have to capture two since we've rolled up with our Apatron there. So that's a thing that we're gonna have to keep in mind. And there's gonna be chests loaded throughout the game, but there's not gonna be enough keys to get them all. So it really comes down to how you know the chests. Or you find a safe point in the area and then you use the chest then. Mirror of Devar, that'll make me pretty much impenetrable to poison, so that's gonna be useful. I'm really glad we picked up a mirror of Devar from that minion. Got him, just before he jumped into the other guy. That means I have to fight two in sequence. Because god damn it, fighting this thing in sequence is annoying. But, this time, we're off on a good start. This guy will heal. No, he didn't. Level, level three. We should have a chance, a good chance of catching it. I'm going to take a risk. It's not in the red. But the red's like the most likely when you're going to capture it. So, if it heals, it gives me a better chance to weaken it some more. To actually capture it. I don't want this damn thing to heal on me when I'm bringing out the water menu. So this is what I'm going to choose to do. I'll try to get as much of this done as possible. There we go. We've got the water minion solved. Well, we've now got the air minion partially solved. We just need the fire type slug for poison. And I think we're pretty much set with everything. So we can ignore you. Here we go, fire one. Fire bug. Hmm. Then at this point, I think I might turn you into experience instead. We'll see what we do with you. I'm not sure yet. It just depends. You're looking really good for experience. But I need a fire meter just in case I have to switch it back. So we'll take this, because this is a spell using thing. It means Agni, or Agi, I can't remember what it's called in the game. So we're gonna take the first fire spell. That's the main reason we're capturing it. And it can also balance out the special attack distribution with the physical attack on Patelchi, which is the fire ogre we're gonna use. But if it turns out we get the fire slug, you know, we'll flip back, we may, which is the other one, if we see the wind over, because then it gives us another option. It all depends, really. Now that the battle's done, we use about 10 mana. We should recover pretty much almost all of it. There we go. We had just enough mana. Oh, we're going to ignore... Normally you'd pick up these knowledge tablets. They're really pointless. The more you know about the game, anyway... You don't really need to have this. Okay, this is really starting to make me want to actually kill these things. Alright. Looks like our Rapatron's gonna get the experience in her guts. Regardless. That's fine. Rapatron, let's do some shit. I wanna make this a relative I wanna make this a relatively short video. So yeah. That's kinda why I'm taking it like this. If I can find a bit of variety of means I'm capturing, but mainly I'm only going to be powering up the water one first, because the other ones are going to be a bit of an iffy situation, until I have more uh, more pieces to use together. And that's one thing I like about this game. The monster fusing could look really disgusting, hilarious, or really cool. So it's like all over the place with the kind of creature combinations you create. Just takes a body type and then takes external features and skins and puts them over the one or the other. So second form takes the skins and additional features. Base form is the body. So the first one's always going to be the body. Alright, here's our fire minion. We're going to at least want one of these things because then we have to time it on and we have a strong fire minion early on. That's the main point of what I'm doing here. So... Just thought I'd point that out while well, I got the opportunity. Because there's fire slugs more than that ogre. Then we have two different variants. We have a special attacking variant, fire minion, and we'll find out if we want to fuse the two together. Apparently no. 
or Apatron just straight up killed him. Shit. That actually just happened. Ooh, now our Repertron's gonna actually have another stat drop when we freaking fuse it with the bloody water minions that we've caught. Oh, well, whatever. Now we know that we can one-shot this damn thing. I know they have good magic defense, so we'll throw Vali at them instead of the special. So that's completely calculated only by magical attack, and since these have good magic attack and magic defense, it should be able to tank it and it should weaken it enough for me to actually capture it without killing it. So that's our plan. We really do want to do that. Volley. And there we go. We're going to go and chance it on this. Oh, it's dead. Again. Shit, damn it. I'm just murdering them all. Oh, well, our Apatron can use EXP, so I guess it's fine. And we're going this way anyway, so we're going to try and wrap this up relatively quickly. Because we want one of these things. Even if I have to weaken it with this guy and take a fuck ton damage. I guess that's okay. Alright. So we dealt 9 damage to it, so if we deal another 10... No. Nope. Whatever. It's as weak as it's going to be. We're just going to take our opportunity and capture this thing, because it's going to spam fire spells at us. And we kind of want to mix it with something else that has the same fire spell. So we can have it stronger. And if there's a fire slug here, well then I'll heal and, uh, my main guy up. And then we'll be casting Mirror of Devar. So that way if they do start spending poison, I've got four hits of poison protection. So that's the aim. I would have chose for defense, but oh, what the fuck? Yeah. That's the first time that's happened. But not in the first bit surprising. Let's try this again. Oh, oh, there's a couple cheats that I will sort of add into the reservoir. Which is going to be, of course, the skins and all that sort of thing. I'll find out where these cheats are located and add them in. Because a lot of the ones that I'm doing is just ones to make grinding less take, take less time. And change aesthetics. I promise that's the only thing I'm doing. So that's like cocoons and skins. And there's also a cool skin code for the Dark Arbitron that I've brought up in the first episode. And I will be putting on Arbitron, and that's why. It's awesome. Oh shit. I need to freaking heal the main guy now. Well, you know what? We're gonna need it in the battle. If these guys are fire. If they're wind, it shouldn't be a problem. They're wind. Okay. These guys will be total pushovers. We don't want to be back attacked, so we want to take this guy, run with the key, then turn back around and see if we can kill him. But these are slugs that will mix with the air ogre when we come back, so there's reason to capture it for that reason, just so I can make a air minion that doesn't suck and has variety. So I'll keep that in mind, since I know these don't have poison, so I don't have to worry about them. I'll probably bulk episode, like, do double at this point, just so I can get the whole... Everything that needs to happen in the area of effect... Oh, shit, there's a physical issue, just use a spell. Whatever. We're capturing only one, anyway. We're not capturing two. We're gonna capture one and kill the other. Alright, you ready to be captured? Oh, shit, you do have poison! Nice! Well, waters usually resist poison, but yeah. This gives me reason to go swap out for the main player, capture that one. And there we go. Status ailments. It's a bitch. But I could use the level spurts capturing monsters. I'm gonna need it to be at least level 3 at the end of the level. And there'll be a good physical wind that I want to grab there. So, mixing it with this thing will make it a solid entry. So we've got a good fire spell slash chain one. We'll have a potential good for a really good wind monster at the end of the thing. So we'll focus on the wind at the end. So now this thing is just going to be murdered. Resisted to hell, mate. Okay, what we need to do is go Valyrian Powder. This is why I bought it. Because I knew I'd want this. I knew it needed to be done. 
Even if this guy gets poisoned, it doesn't matter, I can just swap back in. Now, I'm just gonna swap back in. And all I have to do is defend one hit. Which, when defending, it's more than likely to hit that you take less damage. Which is pretty nice. I'm gonna say, that's actually a really good mechanic. And when you defend, you get a certain amount of mana back. So I'm gonna hit it with Bali. So we've got some ice magic. Ah, oh, I didn't do nearly as much damage as a physical special would. Okay, well this is just being killed for Apatron's like halfway experience, because he's gonna get halfway from level 2, which will bump him up to level 4. Which I think I might do the merging off camera. So I think that's a solid move. Since it's like a three-part fusion for everyone but a rapid at this point. Since there's not many water minions here. But it really just introduces the main three elements that you're going to be running for the main, uh, most part of the game. So uh, it's pretty good that they secretly designed it so that way you wouldn't have as much trouble. See, now what we're going to be doing is running straight to this skeleton key. And now we're done here. So we're going to leave the forest. And we shall see you guys in the next episode of Mega 36 signing out. This has been Retro Gaming Sessions, episode 2 of our Let's Play for Jake the Story of Tatoyamu. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'm Mega 36, signing off.